I got two complete different offers for this, but that's not stopping me. I've been sharing very publicly that I've been building Event Convo, which is an event platform that solves a lot of problems for the attendee, for the organizers, for conference organizers, meetup organizers, and speakers. Like, I've been hosting events. I've been putting on meetups in different countries and cities uh, in a conference now, and there have been some very distinct pain points over the last seven, almost eight years I've been doing events, and no one has solved these problems for whatever reason. And so I figured out I'm just going to try and solve them, right? And so uh, I've been having a lot of fun with it, to be honest with you, mainly because as I've been solving it, I've been like, oh, wow, I'm finally solving this issue. But I think the other side of it, too, is like I've been really enjoying the process, learning a lot. Um, Really building systems is always a fun thing. And so like this has kind of just brought all my favorite things on the side. It's been a really fun thing to do on nights and in the weekend, kind of outside of work and all the good stuff. Um, But honestly, it's been really, really a blast. And I've been geeked out, excited about I've learned so much. Um, But I think the coolest thing about this is this is something that I could actually see people using. And I mean, like I kind of said in the hook, right? Like I've been, I've gotten two offers uh, just from sharing it publicly, which is really cool. But at the same time too, um, I don't really see me doing anything with that, right? Like it's, it's been a good motivator. Um, it's kind of got me really excited for this. Uh, but I'll kind of show you and walk through what this is solving because a lot of people have been asking, right? And so the, the way the platform works is You can host meetups and events. If you're someone that wants to attend, you can. But I want to solve very specific problems. There's a lot of tools that I built for organizers, and there's way more coming right now. Like I don't want to release this until I got uh, significantly more tools for everybody. But right now we're obviously every because there's no beta even. Like this is just me using test data. But we can kind of see our landing area, so we can create an event, start a group. Since our account here, who is uh, he doesn't know it, well, he kind of does. But Eric Anderson, uh, a good buddy of mine, he is one of my test users, uh, even though he doesn't have access to the account. <laughs> but it's been fun to kind of like make, make all my friends um, my test users. Uh, but Here's our landing area. We have a location filtering, so it'll default automatically to your city. But if you wanted to change cities to another city, you can. And through geocoding, it'll kind of show you the events in your area. And then, of course, we have like our featured events right here. So um, based on your interest, because you can set that in the profile, and based on your location, it'll try and find events that it thinks that you would like. Um, obviously, the more events that you end up liking over time, it'll kind of learn that about you a little bit and what so on and so forth. Then we have our calendar here. So uh, the calendar, you can kind of see what dates have events and so um, maybe on this day there's 20 events or 30 events and you can click it and it will filter all of that and if you're an organizer for an event your group will be here so you can kind of manage and see your groups but the interesting thing here is we have upcoming events now I know this is dated I I just needed more test that I was tired of creating events Um, this is just there for the moment but you can kind of see all of these events as you go through and as you scroll you can see this thing here did you know these conferences are happening in your area this kind of came to me because there's no real central location for conferences or events. And for me, there was a conference that was five minutes away from my house, uh, PHP, uh, the Larcon US in Dallas, right? Literally five minutes away. And I didn't even know what was happening until day two of the event. And I was like, wow, like from an advertising perspective, a conference is really restricted to who can see it in what way, shape or form, right? Conferences don't really have a centralized location. But now here... Because I'm in this area, even though I'm not on the conference page, at least I'm familiar with what's happening within my area. Even if I don't go, like from an informational standpoint, I now know like, oh, these events are happening. Like, it's cool. Like, and so now if I'm at a water cooler at work or something, I could talk about it, right? Um, now, the platform is not restricted only to tech, right? There's sections for fitness groups, arts and crafts, social gatherings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But since you know, I am a developer... I'm kind of making events based on the things that I've already done just so I can solve those pain points first, right? Um, Then, of course, as you scroll down, more events, right? And then, of course, you have the conference page. And so here, you can see all the conferences happening, what dates, et cetera, et cetera, to go to. Now, there's something very different about this platform. And so I'll show you the first thing of solving the problems for speakers. So if I go to my profile and I go to preferences, I am a speaker and I want to see conferences looking for speakers. By doing this, I now enable the speaker flow of the website. And so as I go here, you now see this that wasn't there before, a CFP page. And any conference that is looking for people that have a sessionized link that they attach to it, you can submit a talk and it will automatically redirect 
to the sessionize that they their sessionize link, right? So now from a conference standpoint, it is so much easier for them to source speakers especially if like it's a local conference that's yeah. trying to let, let people know. And one thing that is on my to-do list right now that I haven't done yet is to add uh, locationing services here. So right now it's set to show it globally, but what I want to do is prioritize distance to the speaker. And so um, if maybe it's somebody who's brand new to speak and they're trying to speak for the first time or something like that, that will be there. And then as I'm scrolling through, so there's a dedicated CFP page, but guess what? If I go to the events, I now see a call for speakers. So I can see, even if I'm not on the CFP page, which conferences as I scroll look are looking for people to attend their events. Now, the other thing, I can kind of come back here, right? And see, like if I go here, I can see who RSVPs for events, and that modal pops out that right now this is gonna be hyperlinked obviously to kind of go to their profile so you can learn more about them, et cetera, et cetera. And the other thing is, if you notice in the profile, we have a social section. And the thing that it's happening here is as you put your profiles, this will be guarded. And so if you are RSVPing to an event, you will get a QR code for your profile section. And then the bigger idea is this is hidden until someone scans your code and it's basically saying you're allowing them to see all of your links. So from a networking perspective, there's tons of things for the attendee to kind of connect with others, to sync with others, to showcase what it is that they've done, uh, or like all the ways that they can connect with them. Um, so like we're gonna have a section for like your personal site and all that stuff. I'm, I'm building that out right now as we speak. Um, and so the other thing is obviously, we'll go to the profile and we'll go to my groups. And so this is a group for somebody. Now, I just met the lead of this Coffee and Code group, right? Uh, he's out of Washington, D.C., Stephen Chan. And I learned more about the groups. And so I was like, oh, let me just make a test group, something simple. And so here is what it looks like um, when you have a group, right? So this is the obviously the admin view to a certain degree. And one thing that we have here that's solving a problem for meetups is allow speaker applications. One of the biggest pain points of a meetup is trying to get speakers, right? I constantly see all the time at meetups where they're like asking people, hey, you know, if you wanna speak, please let me know. And then of course you'll sometimes see organizers that are constantly having to remind people like, oh, um, la -da -da -da, like, you know, you wanna speak, speak, speak. So if you enable this and we go back, you can see here that here is somebody in our community that is a member of the community, right? And they wanna speak. So here it kind of says experience developer, speaking experience, they can kind of talk about the topics that they want to speak on. And so if we want a topic or a talk around React or Vercel, we can approve this application and then we can start talking to them via either email or direct message to say, hey, you know, I want to speak at your event, let me know, et cetera, et cetera. And so now obviously the goal is, and the hope is, we would have all of these other people there um, that we can kind of sort through. Uh, this isn't a replacement for Sessionize, but Sessionize you know, is very conference focused. If they open up a meetup one, I'd love to kind of implement that because I think that would just be easier for a lot of people. But I do think that at least for right now, this is pretty cool from the, um, it's, it's simplistic, like there's nothing major here, but the bigger idea here is uh, if there are people in your community, especially like first time speakers that wanna speak, they can absolutely do this. Now, our, my next goal with this is right now, this is only showing um, in your group page. So if they go to your group page, they'll see that. My next goal is to add a secondary option to open it up and put it on the CFP page as well so any speaker can be notified that you're trying to find speakers for your event. I've been asked multiple times and even last night at a meetup, like, do I think this will overtake any other event site or any other event tool? And I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Um, but I've been dealing with these pain points for literally over seven years now. And so either I'm about to shake things up or I'm about to make a drop in the ocean. But if this makes other platforms start trying to think about the attendees and think about the organizers and like really solve pain points and problems to like make their lives easier and stop breaking the bank to the point where the average meetup, they don't have big budgets, right? Like even getting pizza for some of these meetups, it's so expensive and they can't afford it. And so then you're adding expensive fees just to attend an event like some of these platforms are charging 50 bucks a month 99 dollars a month and you're getting 20 people at your event like you're paying what two dollars three dollars per person just to come and advertise it to them for a thing that you're voluntarily doing out of your own pocket to kind of bring the community together like it's it's it's, it's a lot and so um either i'm about to shake things up or I can at least motivate them to start doing something to really help people out. And so that's kind of the way that I'm looking at this right now. But honestly, man, it's just been fun. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. 
um, I just love developing solutions. And like, I feel like this is a really, really good solution from an attendee perspective, from an organizer perspective, a conference organizer perspective, and a meetup organizer perspective, but also from a speaker perspective. And so I feel like it really solves a lot of problems. And I'm excited about that. So uh, I'll keep sharing publicly what I've been doing and what I've been getting involved with and the way that I'm solving this. So uh, this application is being built with um, Next.js, Node on the back end, AppRite uh, for authentication, um, and even data uh, databasing. And uh, it's, it's just been a great thing. I actually was originally going to build the back end in Java. And the last minute social media ba basically convinced me not to do it and uh, to do it within Node. And so that's been fun. Um, but worst case scenario, right? We start breaking this stuff down and start doing like tutorials on it, I guess. Best case scenario, maybe you have a new home to start finding events. 